uh, this larger role in the apparatus that humanities, movies, music, and media play. So uh, I have uh, developed the, the logo for this movement, and I'll leave the rest uh, to y'all, but I've at least got the image. Because think of the mm, mm good from the Campbell's Soup ad. Remember that? A couple decades, great ad. Uh, so it just start already puts people in a good mood. Then you've got the soup can, which, uh, as we know, Andy Warhol took the Campbell soup can, made it into a uh, figure, made it into a, an electric term or, or image uh, in pop art. So you've already got electric writing underway. And then it's a rebus. You got dream work because the can is uh, means I can, uh, like bele pose, which is where there's a will, there's a way. Uh, so the soup can is Ariba saying it's possible, the potential of uh, being which uh, the new apparatus promises. So I've done the logo, that's, we've got that, can the soup can, mm, you know. You think about humanities, philosophy, the humanities adds that interjection, you know, a thoughtful mm, kind of too. Mm, mm, good. <laughs> but it's also uh, a question. Mm? Saying stem. <laughs> That's his question. You have to say it like this. Uh, you might lose some respect in Dean's office, but you know, you're doing the right thing. Now I'm gonna do one other part of the work for you. I don't can't do it all myself, so people here, uh, excellent two T's are, are present. Uh, and so I will give uh, a little more uh, background, something about the history of the apparatus. It has to do with national crisis. What happens in national crisis is a very important part of apparatus shift. So think about uh, the origins of the modern research university. The origins of the modern research university, remember, Germany thought it had the best army in the world and the Prussians, and they could not believe that uh, the Napoleonic armies were able to beat them. So after the Napoleonic Wars, and the Germans had uh, the war machine, Manuel Delano's idea of the war machine, the German war machine was that of the clock, the mechanism of the mm -hmm. clock uh, clock-like uh, armies, which had been very good for hundreds of years, got beat by a new thermodynamic motor, as Yolanda says, this was the new war machine of the French, drawing upon the reservoir of the French people as a kind of source of power. Germans, after the Napoleonic Wars, gathered intellectuals, politicians, and they said, we need to address education and never let the French beat us ever again. And they founded the Modern Research University, and the first modern research university on the German model was Johns Hopkins University in 19th century in America. And that was doubling down on literacy, probably made sense at the time. Well, it must have worked, because 1870-71, there was the Franco-Prussian War, and the Germans really kicked the butts of the poor French, caused a national crisis. But you remember that Nietzsche was in the German cavalry at the time, so duh! No, we're not going to. The Germans are going to win. Also, what happened was, uh, you know, Alsace-Lorraine, sort of a fetish being changed back and forth between Germany and France. Once again, the French lost Alsace-Lorraine. Now, the, my historical element here is that the Elmers, my ancestors, uh, came to America from Alsace to avoid the Prussian draft. And, and I kept that tradition going in the Vietnam War era. So, <laughs> So, French national crisis, what was the French response? It was not to start another kind of university of any, of any sort, but rather the Alsatians, in the context of the larger French national crisis being so badly beaten by the Germans, withdrew into sort of a, a more uh, pondering kind of a hmm, either sort of a hmm sort of response, like hmm, uh, what's going on here? And they, uh, gathered uh, in Montmartre, uh, in uh, the outskirts of, of Paris, there was a, a, an Alsatian cafe called uh, the Krautheimer, and these Alsatian patriots, French patriots, gathered there, and they started monthly uh, meetings, and the goal of these meetings was to revive and recover the Esprit Gawa, which was the spirit of Rabelais, specifically, and one of the quotations of one of the founders of this movement said, that glory of the nation known as the French wit must be rehabilitated. That is why the incoherents are here. And without ever being dirty, they do everything possible to be married. This was the, the Esprit Gawa under the, the picture and spirit of Rabelais. 
And these uh, meetings started uh, entertainments. And they basically, in these entertainments, practice the spirit of fumisme, which is this kind of uh, French wit spirit of mocking everything. And this is the origin of the avant-garde, was in these movements, the incoherence, the hydropaths, and they did this, this amazing uh, uh, examples of parody and uh, mockery, including they had mock academies where the, the servers wore uh, academic gowns and, and hoods and hats and so forth. And you got promoted up to rooms where the drinking was even more boisterous uh, as you progressed. And it was a big mock academy. And this was the origin of the avant-garde. So we recognize this. Uh, ultimately, the culmination of these cabarets then developed in the 1880s in France. Uh, the culmination was the Cabaret Voltaire, of course, in Zurich uh, during World War I. And it was the spirit of Dada, of Dadaism, uh, the prime gesture, if you want to take the essence of it, uh, Duchamp's urinal submitted as a hoax or a joke to the salon that refused to prove that they actually wouldn't make good on their promise to let absolutely anything submitted count as art. They, as you know, rejected his urinal, which he loved. Of course, that became the most famous work of the 20th century. Uh, but this fumisme spirit came, comes from the word relating to chimney sweeping. And when you hear that phrase, you remember that Anna O, oh, the first uh, hysteric Anna Lisanne, Breuer and Freud uh, called her talking cure uh, chimney sweeping. So there's this kind of fumiste blowing of smoke, uh, which is this new spirit uh, which took off and became the attitude of, of electricity. Uh, so this is what I want to call attention to, is that the French response is in fact the electric response. Not a new kind of research university anyway, we've already got that, but a different kind of institution and we want to think, well, what is the kind of consequence, what is the institutional formation in the United States that took up this cabaret spirit, carried it on, and developed it? And it would have to be something like Las Vegas, sort of disney cabaret at Las Vegas, is, is the new sort of institution, meaning uh, an entertainment kind of an institution. Uh, this is the, and this is a new war machine, uh, because you might think about uh, what Delanda's categories are. You go from the clockwork mechanism that was you know, the earlier Germans to the motor, which is the French Revolutionary Army. But the new, the new war machine is the network. And the straw in the wind here uh, of the next uh, uh, generation war machines is the Sony versus North Korea situation we had recently. This is what you want to think about uh, as the next war machine. So what are the consequences of this? Well, think about uh, a sort of an inversion, a kind of a Copernican revolution uh, in education, be like. I mean, you need both, right? But so think about Bohemia, the space that opened up in bourgeois Paris in the 19th century, the origin of the avant-garde, uh, Montmartre in Bohemia. Who are the Bohemians, right? They are the lumpen proletariat, uh, you know, the, the poor, the destitute, the dropouts, the criminals, and the students are living in there too. So by day, the students are going to class. But at night, they're going to the cabaret. So the diurnal and the nocturnal, you need both, right? But there's a kind of a Copernican revolution, or we should say uh, a Diogenesic revolution. Remember Diogenes. And Diogenes uh, requested, uh, as he was facing death, requested that he be buried uh, standing on his head, because he said, soon down will, he, will be up. The idea is that the electrate uh, learning is that of the nocturnal, that is what the students did at night in the cabaret is uh, more important for electricity than what they do in class during the day. But now we think about that, what does that mean in practice? What is the practical dimension of this? Keeping in mind that Dadaism is the invention of, of electrate logic. So the cabarets and Dadaism, is, that's to electricity what the Athenian Academy, the invention of logic is to literacy. So you imagine, you know, 2,000 years into the future, of an apparatus structured in the logic of data, thinking of data as pure creativity. Well, what is applied creativity? Applied creativity is precisely that. That is the invention strategies. So the immediate recommendation that I will offer to you today is two, two things. First of all, what should we be doing in our own electric classrooms? We should be developing general electricity, which is to say a kind of invention, creativity, across the curriculum. I mean, even engineers need to invent. So let's take over uh, the, the practices of teaching invention in that larger sense for everyone as a, as a basic uh, electricity. But the other dimension is to think about the applied data, that is to say the, the applied creativity 
uh, think about the relationship that the STEM has uh, with its professional practices in the, in the technological sector. We remember that an apparatus, technology is only one part of it. The smartphone is really a blank book, right? That's where they should sell them, in the blank book section. Uh, it doesn't have anything on it. Right? What's the content? That comes from, hmm, you know, hmm, doesn't it? Yeah. So we should have a, the, so my recommendation, this will require a, a rather drastic reorganization of the university and the undergraduate curriculum. Uh, we should develop a, a, a practical relationship with the, what are now called the creative industries. The creative industries, if they started tracking them in terms of the economic power of the hmm disciplines uh, since 2013. Uh, 917 billion dollars in GDP in, in 2013. Two million jobs. This is serious money. The government and state of Florida says we need those kind of job related STEM sort of disciplines. Hmm, I say. Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> no, two million jobs. That's 